How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today I'm going to be showing you a very quick tip about masking when you're masking in Premiere Pro, in After Effects, in Final Cut, in DaVinci Resolve, any of those programs that allow you to mask something using keyframes. And this is a technique that I learned many, many years ago when I was doing some rotoscoping work. And it's something that just saves so much time for me instead of having to go through frame by frame or relying on an actual tracker. It just, it's a way of speeding up that workflow when you're trying to mask something. So let's jump into Premiere Pro. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So here I've got a clip that I shot in Iceland on my Mavic Air. And it was basically this kind of nook that was in this cliff that I just I saw it from the road and I absolutely had to try and fly through it. All of these seagulls were going crazy here, which I was a little bit nervous about flying through, but it was fine. And I just, I knew that I had to fly through it and I kind of already had an idea of how I wanted to grade this. Now I've applied a very basic primary grade to the entire clip, which you can see here. Uh, but the problem is that I'm losing a lot of that detail that was in that rock before. If I take it away again, you can see all of the detail. When you've applied the grade, you lose a lot of that. And so I'd like to be able to bring that detail back in, but the problem is that the shot tracks forward, which means that I'm going to need to be able to track the mask that I'm going to be applying to the secondary color grade over that area. And so I've done just that. I've created an adjustment layer, which not only brightens up that area, but also darkens this area behind. So it's two masks using two Lumetri color panel effects, which I've masked off depending on the area, depending on the grade. So you can see just before and after, it's just bringing a lot more of that tonal range, a lot more of that dynamic range that the camera's not really all that capable of back in. So it's kind of faking a more HDR look which just goes to show that you can really push footage much further than you would expect to by applying secondary grades to it. So if we look on this adjustment layer, you can see I've got my two Lumetri effects. One is the rock face and one is that background. And you can see that I've got a mask and it's keyframed and all of that, and that's great and it tracks along. So let's just wipe those away and start from scratch so that we can do this together and I can show you exactly what I mean when I say speed up your masking workflow. workflow, workflow really struggling to talk today. All right, so let's just wipe that whole adjustment layer, bring a new one back in. I'm on a 1080 sequence here. I have an adjustment layer that I've already made, which you can see is a 1920 by 1080, which is at 24 frames a second. Great. So I'll just stretch that to the length of the clip and I'll come to color and I will just brighten this up a touch and then bring some shadows back in there. And then it's looking very green. So let's just make it maybe a little more purple, a little warmer. And then using what they've added in the new 2019 version of Premiere, I'm going to just come down and desaturate the shadows and the highlights just because that way it's not going to be, it's not going to be tinting those anything, any weird colors. You're not going to be having purple birds or green birds or that kind of thing. So there you go. That is, that is done. And that's, that's basically that area done. But the problem is it's applying to everything. So what we need to do now is mask it off. So we'll come back into our normal editing panel. And then right here you have in the effects controls window, you've got your Lumetri color. And right under there, you've got three options. You can create an ellipse, which is a circle or an oval. You've got a four point polygon to make a square or a rectangle or a parallelogram, or you have the free draw and you can even turn these into Bezier points, which means that you have handles to adjust smoothness. It's not just a sharp angle, but I'm just going to go for sharp angles because I find that the Bezier mask is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit temperamental in Premiere Pro. So you click that and now on the first frame, we're just going to draw click, click, click. Done. Now that looks terrible because there's no feathering whatsoever. So let's just multiply that feathering by 10. So we have a hundred pixels of feathering. And yeah, that that's looking pretty good. That's brightening up that area of rock that I wanted. It's bringing the detail back in without affecting any of the rest of the image. But now, as you'll notice, if I click on that mask and I go forward, well, that mask isn't moving because it's not tracking anything. It's not a 3D mask or anything like that. So there are a few ways that I could, you know, make that mask move along. First of all, I could try the actual tracking forward feature that's in Premiere Pro. 
I find it to be a little bit temperamental. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It would probably work well for this because it's quite an easy track to make. The thing is, it takes forever. It takes absolutely ages to go frame by frame. The software creates the keyframes, but it goes frame by frame, moving every single node. It just, it takes forever. So that doesn't really play well with the promise I made you in the beginning, which is to save time. The other thing that I see a lot of people doing is going frame by frame. And so they'll hit a keyframe there, then they'll go to the next frame and then they'll adjust the mask and then the next frame and so on and so forth. Working through an enormous clip. I mean, this is nearly, this is about just under nine seconds. So at 24 frames a second, that's 213 frames a second. No, 215 frames a second. I mean, that's enormous. That's an enormous amount of keyframes to have to go through and, and manually adjust. So instead, here's what I want you to do. Set a keyframe at the very first frame, then hit the down arrow on your keyboard or just go to the very end and come back one frame so that you are now at the very last frame of your clip and set another keyframe. And if you click on mask one, it'll actually show you your mask in your program monitor. And now you just go ahead and adjust that mask based on the frame you're on. So this part here was obviously the peak in the first frame, right? It was up there. And so we're gonna come along to the end here and we're just gonna bring this along back over towards the peak there. Then this one here was on that corner. This one here is probably around there, that's cool. Bloody Bezier mode, stop turning the handles. There we go. And this one, and then you can zoom out to like 25% if you need to just have a bit of a better view. And just manually move that mask. And it shouldn't take you too long unless you've really worked on a complicated mask that has a hundred points. Uh, it shouldn't, it really shouldn't take you all that long. Okay, and that, that'll do, that's fine. All right, let's come back into fit. And now if I move this back, well, that mask is already following that track pretty well. It's, it's in the area, right? It's following the motion. It's just not sticking to it all that well. What do I do? I've got a keyframe at the beginning, a keyframe at the end. Well, go to the middle, put a keyframe there. Drop a keyframe, select your mask, and just move it into place and move your keyframes around. Or your nodes around, I should say. All right, and now if I go back to the beginning and scrub along, you can see that that mask is staying pretty much where it needs to stay. But right there, it's going up on the beach and it's gonna be brightening areas you don't want. So what do you do? Well, you've got a keyframe in the middle, keyframe at the beginning, keyframe at the end. What about going three quarters of the way? So you go three quarters away between the last keyframe and the middle keyframe. And again, you take the handles and you move them. Go back into 25 and just drag that down and that down and these across. All right, and now how are we looking? Scrub through. Okay, that's looking good. All of that peak is protected nicely. It stays roughly where it's meant to stay. That's fine. That's looking good to me. But you know, that mask there, it edges off on the left a bit too much. So what I'll do is I'll go between the middle keyframe and the starter keyframe and just move these all a little bit to the right. And if you play it back, it looks perfect. With six keyframes, I've been able to save enough time by not having to track it, by not having to go frame by frame. I've not gone through the 215 frames that are in this clip, I've gone through six. And so that is my tip for you for better masking, is create a keyframe at the beginning, create a keyframe at the end, create a keyframe in the middle, and then create a keyframe in the middles of all of those middles, essentially creating a half-life for the space between all of the keyframes. And the more you do that, the more precise, the more accurate it'll be, the fewer shifts you'll have to make on the individual nodes, on the individual handles between keyframes, because the more you're adjusting it, the more it's kind of molding into place already. And that is my tip for today about masking. If you like this, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button to get more videos from me at DoD Media. It's tips and tutorials like this one for filmmakers and photographers, gear reviews, and monthly giveaways. Leave a comment in the comment section, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.